about Kepler's third law and the universal law of gravitation. Okay, so Kepler's third law is uh, T1 squared over R cubed. Uh, okay, uh, R1 cubed. Yeah, which is equal to uh, T2 squared over R2 cubed. Okay, so this ratio and this ratio are equal to each other. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, you know, get it so we look at this particular one. This is, this is Kepler's third law. Okay, but we're also going to compare it with, or we're going to put it with, uh, the force of gravity, you know, the universal law of gravitation, which is uh, force of gravity is G M1 M2 divided by D squared. Uh, and um, I'm going to change D squared into R squared. So we stay with the R motif that's here. Okay, and show that these guys are related to each other. Okay, so uh, R squared. So what we're going to start off with uh, here also is we're going to look at uh, force. Okay, we're going to look at force. Uh, now remember, F equals MA, right? So F equals MA. But the A, what is the path that a planet follows? Okay, according to, according to Kepler um, and Kepler's... First law says that they all follow an ellipsis. Well, a circle is a perfect ellipse. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at A not as gravity pulling straight down, but rather we're going to look at it going in a circular path. Okay, which means that we're going to be looking at uh, centripetal acceleration. Okay, uh, and we haven't talked about centripetal acceleration, but uh, it's it's not any different than some other things that we've looked at, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, A sub C equals velocity in the circle squared divided by the radius, okay? Um, so this is in meters, and velocity squared is velocity is meters per second, so if we square it, it's meters squared per second squared. And then if we divide by a meter, that makes it meter per second squared. So that, that ends up working um, in the sense of units. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this with it. So I'm going to change over to this and say, okay, so my force, force is going to be equal to M and B c squared over r okay so this is going to be my f and this is going to equal g m1 m2 over r squared okay so when i take this guy here i'm going to say um i'm going to say that if we're just looking at this part here. And my M is going to be M1. Okay, So I'm just going to put M1 there just because it's uh, like what we did with the universal law of gravitation in the prior video. All right. So now I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit. M1 is going to cancel with M1. I've got an R here. So this R uh, can go with these guys over here, so that's going to end up canceling out an R. Okay, so this R is going to cancel, and one of these R's are going to cancel. So basically, what I'm saying here is that BC squared is going to be equal to G M two over R. Okay, so that's basically what I'm saying in this case. But what is DC? What is the velocity of a of an object going in a circle. Well, what we have to do is we have to look at the circumference of a circle. Well, what's the circumference of a circle? Remember, velocity is distance divided by time. And the amount of time it takes to go through, so let me, let me put it over here, and I'll do it in a, in a different color. 
So I'll do it on the side. So velocity equals distance divided by time. And the distance in a circle is 2 pi r, right? That's the circumference of a circle. So velocity in a circle, uh, centripetal velocity, is going to be 2 pi r. And then the time it takes for it to go around in a circle is going to be the period. And that's capital T, if we remember before. Capital T means the period of time for an object to complete something. Okay. So I'm going to place this now into this equation here. Okay. So I'm going to end up with 2 pi r divided by t squared equals g m2 over r. Okay. So this is how we're going to look at it from now. Okay. So now let me clean this up here. I'll take out the square. So I'm going to have 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared equals g m2 over r. And we could probably drop the m2. Um, it's the bigger object that we're talking about. Okay, so now kind of clean this up a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my r squared over here and I'm going to bring my t up here and then move everything else around. Okay, so I'm going to take my r down there, and I'm going to move my t up there, and I'm going to take this stuff here, this stuff here, and I'm going to have to divide through, which means I have to bring that one down, all that stuff down here. Okay, so hopefully that's not too confusing for you. Okay, so what I end up with when I do that, I will end up with um, t squared over r, since it's r squared here, and that's r squared right there, and there's another r, that's r cubed, okay, equals, and now I've got 4 pi squared over g m, okay. So this now becomes, this, this becomes Kepler's third law equals this stuff right here. Okay, so Kepler's third law equals this. See, this is Kepler's third law right here, remember? Okay. And that is right there now. Okay. All right, so now we have this. Then we can clean things up. We can look for different things. Well, what can we look for? We can look for time, the period of orbit. We can take a look at the radius of an orbit, okay? So if we take those, what I'm going to do is rewrite the, you know, I'm going to take this up over here and rewrite it here right next to this guy, okay? So we've got t squared over r cubed equals 4 pi squared over g m, okay? Now I'm going to solve for I'm going to solve for uh, t. t equals. That means I'm going to take this over. It's still going to be 4 pi squared over gm. But then I've got to put in r cubed. Okay. Now there's two things I can do here. This was squared, right? Well, now I've got to take a square root. Well, what is 4? Four? 4 is 2 squared. Okay. So I can just clean it up one more time. This will go to, that's what that symbol means, go to time equals 2. And look at the pi. The pi is squared also. Pi square root of r cubed over g m. Okay, and remember, m is mass. Okay. 
So this is one important equation that, we're, that we have. And this is one that I'm going to want you to put into your equation library. It's also going to be one that you are going to do problems using. Okay. So this is there, like that. Well, then I can also solve for r cubed. Okay. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. That just means I'm going to take this r cubed here, and I'm going to put it up in the top. I'm going to take all this stuff, and I'm going to flip it around. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take r, and I'm going to do a cube root of the whole thing, but it's going to be t squared, t squared, and um, I'm going to have 4 pi on the bottom, 4 pi squared on the bottom, and I'm going to have a gm up here on the top. So G, M. okay. So um, let me clean this up. Therefore, this goes to, and uh, we're going to put it in order. So it's not going to be alphabetically out of order or anything like that. So we're going to have uh, that R equals G M T squared divided by four pi squared, and I'm going to take the cube root of that. Okay, so this is going to be another one that we're going to use in our problem sets, okay, that you guys are going to do. Now, the last one we actually kind of already did. It's over here. The last one that you're going to be uh, dealing with is, is is right here in, in this part of it, um, where velocity. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to just take this guy right here, and I'm going to place it down here. Remember, it, it was b squared. So I'm going to say b equals g m divided by r, and I'm going to take the square root. And there's no changes. I'm just moving it over so they're all in line so you can keep in line with that. So that thing to be equals G M over R. And I'm going to take the square root of that. And that is going to be the third one you are going to need for your problem sets. Okay. Not to mention you're going to also need the preview, the, when we did the universal law of gravitation, okay, we used this equation right here, but I also ended up solving for you the, um, for G, okay, um, so we're going to have uh, force due to gravity equals capital G M1 M2 over R squared, but we're also going to have just G acceleration due to gravity equals g m2 over r squared. So these two are going to be additional problems that you're going to need them. And you're also going to have to use Kepler's laws for them. Okay? But, but these are uh, important ones that you need to have on your equation sheets. So find a place on the back of your equation sheets and go ahead and, and write these on there, okay?